Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at using index laws in number and algebra questions. But before we get started we need to understand a few key terms. The first one is the word index means powers. Now you might have seen this when you've seen the word bid mass. The I in bid mass means index. The other one is this here. When we've got the power 3, or any power, the big number we call the base. So we have the base and the power or the index number. Now there's a whole set of rules that come with index numbers or powers and this video is going to go over the main ones that you need to understand. Okay, so the first rule that we need to look at is the multiplication rule. So this is when we've got a base with a power times the same base with a power. Okay, so here I've got 3 to the power 6 times 3 to the power 5. Now, I'm going to write this out longhand just so you can see how this works. So 3 to the power 6, that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times by 3 and that's times by 3 to the power 5 well, that's times by 3 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 let's just squeeze that in there so how many 3's have we actually got here we've got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and this dodgy one on the end 11 so that's 3 to the power of 11, if we just to simplify that down. So when we've got this case here, where we've got the same bases multiplied by each other with powers, then we can simply add the powers. Notice that 6 plus 5 is 11. So we have a look at another question, then we can see how this works. Here we have 5 to the power 3 times 5 to the power 7. So in the last example I went through with you, we've got the two bases the same. Well, this is the same in this case. And what we did with the powers was we added them. So that's how we're going to do it in this one. So the base does not change. So 5 comes down here. And then the power is 3 add 7, which is 10. But what I want you to realise is that this doesn't always work for every case that you're going to come across, particularly if the bases are different. So here I've got 2 to the power 5 times 6 to the power 3. Now what we can't do at this stage is just multiply the bases and then just add the powers. No, the bases are different, which means we cannot combine these like we've done previously. So we have to leave this as it is. However, the beauty of this rule is it extends into your algebra. Here we've got w to the power 5 times w to the power 3. So the bases are the same, so the base in the answer is going to be w. And we add the powers, so 5 plus 3 is 8. So that's our first rule. The first rule that we've come across is when we have two bases that are the same, and they're multiplied, and they have powers. So let's put B and C as our powers here. Then the base stays the same, and we add the powers. So B, add C. And those can be any numbers that you like, or they could be letters in algebra. So the first rule, let's just go over that again. If the two bases are the same, we and it's a times, we add add the powers. Similarly, there is a rule for division. And when we had times, we added the powers. So you probably can guess that when we go divide, we subtract the powers. And that's just true. OK, so in this case, the answer is, well, the base is going to be 8. And the power 9 take away 3 is 6. Let's just take a look at that from an algebra point of view. We've got p to the power 11 divided by 
p to the power 6. Well, that's exactly the same as what we've just seen before. The base is going to be p, and the power 11 take away 6 is 5. So the answer to that one is p to the power 5. And just as before, if the bases are different, we can't do anything with the question. We can't do 9 divided by 3 and then subtract the powers. We have to leave this one alone because the bases are different. So we have another rule. That is, when we have two bases that are the same and they are divided and there's powers involved, then we subtract the powers. So it's going to be A, B, take away C. So we do the first power, take away the second power, and we've got to keep it in that order. The next rule we're going to look at is when there's brackets involved or the power is being raised to another power. So there's two sets of powers involved in the same term. So in this case, this is just like having 6 to the power 3 squared, which means times by itself, so times by 6 to the power 3. Now, going back to our first law that we've looked at, or first rule that we've looked at, we add the powers. So that would become 6 to the power 6. Now, is there a shortcut from here to here? Well, yes, there is. It's very simply this number multiplied by this number. So 3 times 2 will give us our new power of 6. Now you may see these questions where there's no brackets written. So we've got here n to the power 5 to the power 3. You've just got to imagine the brackets in at this stage here. Or just note that there's two powers involved, so what we do with those powers is multiply them. So we'd have here m to the power 5 times 3, which is 15. So the rule we need to remember here is when we have a base to a power raised to another power, we have the base with the two powers multiplied. Now there's just one more thing I want to look at, and that's a very special case that we need to be aware of. Here we've got a question, 3 squared divided by 3 squared. Now if we look at this from a powers point of view, we get, well, the bases are the same, so that's the base of 3, and it's divided, so we subtract the powers, so 2 take away 2, which is 0. Now, if we look at this from a, a sensible point of view, one we looked at before we started messing with powers, we do 3 squared, which is 9, and on the bottom we'd still have 9, and then we'd do 9 divided by 9, which is 1. However, that's the same as that, which must mean that 3 to the power 0 has the same value as 1, or 3 to the 0 is 1. And this works with any case that I can give you. I can change this base and this power, and as long as the bottom one's the same, I'm going to get 5 to the power 0, or that base to the power 0. And if I come along this route, I'm always going to get the answer 1, which must mean anything to the power 0 is 1. And this works in algebra too. If we've got a to the power 0, we put simply the answer 1, given what we've just discovered. So the rule here is if you ever see the power 0 in, in a question or in an answer, you can automatically go straight to this answer of 1. So here are the four things I want you to take away from this video. When we have a times and the bases are the same, we add the powers. When we have a divide and the base is the same, we subtract the powers. When we have brackets and two powers, we multiply the powers. And if we have the power zero crop up anywhere, that's automatically the value of one.